This is Bible Protector. In the United Kingdom, James White debated Jack Mormon about the King James Bible. James White is an ardent anti-King James Bible only author, and Jack Mormon is a Texas Receptus onlyist. Because no one here uses the 1611 KJV. Now, the fact is that we all use, when we're using the King James Bible, we're using the text and translation that was made in 1611. What he's referring to is that we use editions today which were not printed in 1611, but editions that were printed more recently, let's say in the last hundred or ten years. If you're reading a standard King James Version today, you're using the 1769 Blaney Revision. That's what's normally printed, but there's two editions of that, the Oxford and the Cambridge edition, and they're not identical to one another. Almost nobody reads the 1611. But even if you did, then you would know that there were changes made after the 1611. And so, which one's the final authority? White says that we're using the Blaney edition today. This is technically incorrect. We're using editions which date uh, far beyond 1769. The editions we use today are a variety of recent uh, printed editions. They might date from around the 1900s all the way to the present time. The main or standard edition we use today or promote today is the Cambridge edition and there are in fact different uh, editions printed by Cambridge and the particular one that I promote is the pure Cambridge edition. There are other Cambridge editions, this is, there's many different Oxford editions. If you go further back in time, between the time of 1769 and all the way uh, to, let's say, the early uh, 1830s or something like that, you'll find that almost every year could constitute a different Oxford edition. This means that when you go down to the fine detail of uh, orthography, spelling, and things like that, you'll find minor differences and fluctuations editorial in the English rendering of the text. These are not text or translation differences when it comes to underlying readings or actual changes in the King James Bible, which is what, uh, of course, someone like Dr. James White would perhaps like to imply, or at least he doesn't, uh, he doesn't admit to significant changes in his book, but he certainly likes to put it out there to uh, throw this kind of confusion or some kind of question and doubt as concerning well which edition is the right one since they're uh, flexible or changing or different today anyway. That's why we're standing for a standard edition and this is very important to promote and to realize that there is one set of spellings and wording which we can say is absolutely correct and uh, perfect and accurate as far as uh, going right down to the nitty-gritty or as the Bible terminology is to the jot and tittle. Even as the King James translators were producing their text, the different committees did not translate things in the same way. In Matthew they translate the commandment you shall not murder one way and then in Romans they translate you shall not kill. It might be kill and murder depending on Matthew or Romans. Two different committees translating the very same Old Testament commandment in two different ways. James White attempts to smear the translators themselves claiming that they were inconsistent saying that the same original words in one book was translated by one committee one way and a different committee of translators translated the same words in a different book in a different way. And this is clearly exactly what the translators intended because after all they said they did not stand on an identity of phrasing that is to say they did not stand for a wooden and so-called uniform way of translating the same uh, original words to the same English words in every place but in fact perpetually varied their translation according to nuance and of course and more importantly according to the exact sense also at the end of the process of translating that is to say the main work of translating there was another committee that was set up to review the translation after that there were two main editors to work on the translation before it went to the press so we don't have uh, just independent pieces of work but we have a unifying whole
Now, on occasions, when it comes to certain particular spellings, there was editorial work that took place after 1611. This work is called Editorial Regularization. And this brought together a degree of uniformity as far as consistency in English usage, that is to say in spelling of English words and things like that. That does not affect directly text or translation. It is not an issue where these things are related. It is clear that Jack Mormon did not effectively answer or refute the various assertions and accusations made by James White. If Jack Mormon had stood for the perfection of the translation of the King James Bible for its exact text being perfectly present in English and for the issue being resolved concerning the editions and its variations, then he would have made a strong case. Jeremiah 34.16 and other passages have differences whether you look at the Oxford or Cambridge edition, which is correct. The answer, of course, is the Cambridge edition. The pure Cambridge edition has the correct presentation of the King James Bible in every place. And to find out more about this, you can look at my website. It's www.bibleprotector.com.